Okay. Um, so this is uh, ITS-128, and um, <clears throat> this is supposed to be, it started out being a face-to-face -face class, and the, the reason we have, the reason we had face-to-face -face classes is because not everybody likes online, and we made a commitment of a couple years ago to alternate between face-to-face -face and, and online, but of course now with COVID, um, you know, we have to, we have to sort of do what the government, what the, what the government says and what the rules are and everything. So, so we're online here uh, for, for the next uh, foreseeable future. In fact, if you, if you listen today, um, the, uh, uh, now we're back, back to stay at home orders again. So anyway, um, so here we are. So, so today I'm just gonna go over the syllabus. Um, can everybody see my screen? And if you want, you know, in the participants, if you click on participants, you should be able to like, you can like, yes, yes, no, you know, it just work. Oh, yes. So you can click yes or no. And also, you're welcome to, uh, there's these, um, um, there's some sort of anodes. I thought there were some things where you can like clap, clap in your window or something. I don't know, it'll come to me. Breakout rooms, bars, so <laughs> Okay. Anyway, um all right. There so, is Hello? Yes? Yeah, there is. So you can do that and stuff. It's just in the more like raise hand. Yes, no, go slow, go fast, clap. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay. All right, well, okay, anyway, um, so we're, um, so, you know, I'm open to working on all this stuff and using all this stuff. And uh, so we can try to try to make the most out of it. Oh, there, there's a, uh, Micah has got a, okay, yeah. Like that. Anyway, um, okay. So, so looking at my screen here, I somehow got into some sort of annotate mode or something. Um, how am I doing that? How do I undo that? That's pretty cool. Maybe I can try to use it. Okay. So, um, so this is the uh, the Zoom ID and the passcode, and obviously the passcode is the is the the uh, course number, and you know, I I believe that the passcode is uh, designed as sort of a captcha thing, where uh, so Zoom knows that it's a human that's that's logging in. Uh, so so I don't think the passcode necessarily. This is my Zoom theory. Uh, I don't think the passcode has to necessarily be something that's difficult to guess. And in fact, I kind of I think I might have even put it in the title of the. Um, of the course of, of, of the Zoom um, title, uh, but um, um, it's to keep automated uh, HTTP tools from running and just zooming along and, and trying a bunch of random numbers and, and seeing if there's an open Zoom meeting. And if there is, it, 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 it goes into it. Uh, and so by having a passcode, it means a human's got to type it in. Because you notice when you type in the passcode, you're on a Zoom. You're on a Zoom screen, and it's not something that's passed in from your browser. So anyway, uh, I have the link here, and then uh, uh, I'll put the videos inside here. This is a uh, this is a link into the resources folder here. Yeah, I got to figure out how to put this thing in there. Very good. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I'll look at stays on second. Um, so, the best way to get a hold of me is, uh, if, if you need to get a hold of me right away, is to text me, because because that always gets that that will always get to me. Um, and just the first time you text me, just tell me who you are and tell me what class you're in, and then I'll put you in. And then so uh, that way you don't have to say who you are anymore. And and, and I will keep the thread. So, uh, um, and so we're trying out this Zybooks. Here uh, this semester, this semester, and so you've all, if you can get a chance to uh, to uh, sign up for it, 
and you can uh, do this to the uh, let me get that. Oh, I got to erase. Uh, Probably a clear button. And uh, so, so, so this course is is this one. This is this is my Xilinx, uh, my Zybook uh, control panel here. And this is our course. And I'm also teaching this 3D Python class. And and we're also using the same textbook, although in 3D8 we're zipping through the we're zipping through the whole textbook in about the first 10 weeks, and then we're going to jump off. On do some other stuff, but but I that's how much faith I have in this technique, where you know you um, it's a lot of uh, participation activities where 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 to get all the points you just got to do the whole do it and and uh, you get the points for doing it, not how well you do or how quickly you get to the answers uh, and so on. And um, and I'm also uh, using it for for a database class that I'm so um, so I'm going to learn things in in all three of these classes. So, so don't be surprised if things you know, sort of change as we go along. I kind of assigned a lot of uh, uh, programming assignments, and I may end up um, uh, you know, uh, taking down some of them just because if, it, if, if they get long. But early on, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty easy. This is all easy stuff. Okay, so you have to have a laptop. Um, uh, and, uh, and so the way we're going to do the grading is um, is we're going to have uh, uh, it's all going to be out of the Zy book and then these participation activities and these challenge activities and these lab assignments and uh, and I'm not gonna okay so and there's there's assignment dates and there's due dates and so on but I am not gonna in not I'm not going to enforce these due dates by taking off points if you don't make the due dates because you know this is all new and, and I, I don't uh, and so the important thing is that you do it and I think the 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 text is designed designed like it could be a self case a self paced text um, we aren't doing self paced normally we spread it out over 15 weeks and we've got certain things due every week. But I'm not going to, and so, and that's how I'm going to teach it, and that's how my lectures are, are going to be. But if you get behind, uh, just make sure you get caught up by finals week, okay? The textbook only lasts until um, until January 5th, so it's going to be real tough to give incompletes, okay? Because uh, unless you would pay for the book again, uh, which, of course, you can't do that. Uh, but uh, so so you so I want you to try to make sure you get everything in time, it done in time, so I'm able to give you uh, your grade on. Um, I will be giving you your grade on this day. So um, now um, you know we're going to be able to cheat a little bit here because this is all auto graded stuff. Okay, so that that means that I don't have to go in there. And examine each one. I basically help you along and monitor. And as you get all the points, you know, I, I see that. And so at the end, uh, I will do one last one last pass of pulling down all the grades from the textbook and putting them putting them into La Lima and see how it turns out. So we're kind of lucky there. And also, who knows uh, what our schedules are going to be like this coming semester because of uh, all this pandemic stuff. Okay, so um, so there's sort of a ratio here about how much it takes, how how much work I think it will be. Now, the participation activities, you should get all these points because uh, you know you just you just do them and, and you get all the points. And if you if the answer is things wrong, it tells you no, this is the right answer. So then you answer the right answer. So on. challenge activities, you get as many tries as you want, but it doesn't tell you the answer always. Uh, sometimes the hints are so obvious that it tells you the answer, but sometimes they're, they're a little bit more difficult. Uh, and so you can submit those as many times as, as you want until you get it. Uh, and, and if you ever are stuck and you just can't get something, just email me. And I will give you a, I will give you a good hint. And uh, there are so many of these that it, in the end, I might just say, 
know, I, I might even just tell you what the answer is if, if you're having trouble getting it, but I'll explain it to you. But there are a lot of them, so I'm not afraid to give you the answer uh, every now and then. The lab assignments are actually programs, and there's and there is a developing there's a place where you're going to develop the program, and you can run it as many times as you want until you, until it looks like you've got a great answer, and then you switch over to the submission uh, button, and then you are, you are, you are able to submit it. Um, so um, so that's uh, so it, it it's actually pretty easy if you have the time. If you have the time, then you should be able to get all the points, uh, and it's usually because you kind of are stuck and you kind of um, you, know, you, you know, you want to move on, you have other classes, and it's, it's that kind of thing. Or if you don't get all the points, uh, it's, usually your, it's, it's usually your time. And, uh, you know, this is in high school. Uh, high school, you know, we can demand uh, one-fifth one of your working of your day in, in a class, but in college, um, we've got a lot of other things to do also. All right, so... Um, so yeah, if you have questions, I, I've got the chat right up here, and so I'll if you know if just you can just pop a question in there, and I'll look at it every now and then. Okay, so so what I'd like to do is actually start. I don't know if there's anything else I got to go over. Go over. This is really all there is. Um, so, so I'd like to just start with the first, the first uh, problem. Okay, so I, so I'm in my library, and I go to go go to my book here, and I'm going to start with chapter one. Now, I think I think mine looks different than yours. Um, uh, and, but I'm just going to have to try. <laughs> I'm going to, you know. Um, I wish that they would give me a student account so I could go in just like you and actually see what you see. Uh, but they, they haven't, they aren't, they aren't too keen on that. So anyway, um, so uh, let me just show you here. You probably don't, you probably don't have this, but this is the content. This is the, um, the content viewer. And there are these participation activities and there are these challenge activities. And then there are these labs, and shows shows figures and so on. So I tell you what, I'm I'm going to start by unselecting everything, and th these are the chapters. These are the chapters of the book, and we can see we, this is standard programming. We go through the chapters in these orders. We learn about variables and expressions, and writing sequences of statements, and the types of the variables, and branching and looping, and then we start getting into functions and all that kind of stuff, and then, then we start to strings is a real cool, important thing, and so on. Um, and this textbook approach is to throw in these uh, participation activities. And so let's take a look at a participation activity. Okay, so I'm going to click on, let, let's see what animations look like. I know, look, there's, there's an animation in the first one. So let's just click on that and see what that is. And this is the first page of the first chapter. This is the whole thing. Okay, so so let's go through this. It's the first page of the first chapter. Isn't it? Yes. So it says what a program is. Uh, there's, uh, there's the input part. There's the part that does the processing. And then there's the output part. And, uh, and then there's variables and statements and so on. And look, there, here's this nice activity. Now. Uh, so this is a graded thing. The way they get all the grades is you just, you just run it. Okay, so I'm going to click start here, and it shows. First of all, it's going to execute this line, and what this line does is it it creates a variable called x, and then it does this get next input thing, and so then it grabs whatever is typed into the keyboard, and that's stuck over and, and stuck into the value x, stuck, stuck into the x variable, and then. It does the same thing, but it asks for the keyboard again, and, and it gets the Y variable, and here the guy types in five. And then the next thing it does is it creates a Z variable, and it creates that, it takes X plus Y, and it becomes, becomes seven. And so now, now the memory, this is like the computer memory right here, looks like that. And then the last thing, and so that's the computing part. 
And then there's the output part where it puts Z to the output screen. So that's that. So, so this is this seven C. So um, you know, this is kind of enlightening, and so that's all you do to get all the points. See, I got to check up there. That's pretty easy. Um, and it's it, you know, it um, it may seem like just kind of utterly simple, but you know, it's it's nice when you're learning something new where they piecemeal this new information and skills and so on uh, to you. And, um, uh, you know, it's, it, it all seems easy along the way. And, and, and it, it, in the end, you're going to be pretty amazed at, you know, what you're, you're able to do. Uh, so, so then this participation activity is, is some questions. And in fact, let's go back. I'm going to go back to this thing. And uh, I'm going to go new content explorer. And so that was a, that was a question set. See, there's two question sets. Then the last one is the learning tools. Okay, so so we're going to see all three of these kinds of participation activities uh, in the first section of the of the first chapter here. So let's so we've done animation, and next one is this. So here we're just answering some questions. Uh, the above example of program has how many instructions? It's got one, two, three, four, four. Yes. Got two inputs, one processing, and one output. Next one is show. Suppose a new instruction were insert. Suppose a new instruction were inserted as follows. Um, okay, so this does look confusing, but um, okay. So after this, after this, after this instruction, which by the way is this one, what they mean. Is let's add one more instruction and put this thing in there. This is the new instruction, and so that's going to be put right in the middle here, and then this last one is still going to be here. So what the instruction is, is add one more to z. Okay. So this thing has computed z. It's seven, and then so we're, so we're going to add another instruction here that says add one to it. So you know it'll make it eight, and then it'll output an eight. So what would the last instruction? What okay? This is a. What would the last instruction then output to the screen? Okay, did, does that make sense to you? Does this sentence make sense to you? What would the last instruction then output to the screen? I guess it does make sense. It, it to me it's. What would the last? Okay, I see. Okay, um, anyway, um, when I read that, I, I was going to click on feedback. And if you ever have any problems, click on feedback and, and type in uh, this uh, question wording is confusing. Maybe, well, anyway. Um, so anyway, um, I bring that up because um, this is no, this is all new stuff. And in fact, in my other class, uh, one of one of the students actually found an error, and, and and it was an error in the in the way the thing was working. And so he he sent um, he sent a, a a thing like that. And he got it. He got a response back right the same day, and, and then he passed it on to me. So um, we are kind of uh, being being the guinea pigs for this. Although this one on Python is is a little bit farther along than the other one. So um, it's it's probably these are all pretty good. So so anyway, um, so let's so this one would output uh, eight, and then this one would if. If x is 10 and y is 20, okay. So basically, what this is saying is, um, if the input was was 10 and 20 instead of 2 and 5, 10 and 20, then what what does z end up being? Well, it's well, it's the sum of the two, so it would be 30. Now, now let's let's give a wrong answer. 
I'm going to give 20. Oh, mm -hmm. oh. Uh, so I'm going to show the answer. Oh, I have to press again to show the answer. Okay. Oh. Okay, anyway, that's good. So, uh, so I'm going to put 30 here just to. Okay, there. Great. So, and I should get all the points. Okay, so this gives a good a good analogy, and I've used I use this analogy a lot. It's 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 a program is like a recipe. It's exactly like like a recipe, and it's got to be unambiguous like a recipe. It needs to be unambiguous. Um, and and uh, the person that's the person that's following the recipe recipe has got to know what all these things mean, and so the computer has to know what these statements mean. Uh, and so it's there's two parts to programming. One is is getting the the sequence of of operations or things that are done in the right order, and then it's describing them correctly. It's just like it's just like baking. You got to get them in the right order, and you got to describe it so the cook, the, the chef knows how to uh, how to uh, do each each instruction. And here's a nice participation activity where uh, you're supposed to um, execute the program, drag the contents. Um, all right, well, I'm just going to run it. It's doing that. Okay, so each time I start out by setting m equal to 5, and then I output. The I output m, that's 5, and then I take m and I multiply it by 2 and I output it, okay, that makes it 10. Then I multiply it by itself and output it, so that's 10 times 10 is 100, okay, and then I add 15 to it and then I output it out again, so 15 is uh, 115. And, uh, and uh, so then the next one here is that can you make it so the output is greater than 500? And yes, you can, uh, but I'll let you do that. You basically want to get m as big as you can before you do this m times m, m times m step last. And so you're taking as big a number as you can and you multiply it by itself, and that ends up being a big number. Anyway, um, so. Um, so this is a okay. So here you have more. more this is these are question participation activities, and um, uh, what instruction completes the program to compute a triangle's area? The area of a triangle. So we have a program. First, we get the base of the triangle. Then we get the. Then we ask for the height of the triangle, and then we have a variable called x, and that is equal to base times height. And then there's one more thing we have to do to get the uh, area to get the area of a triangle. Now um, you know it's like I don't remember how to do that. It's like multiply by one half. Huh? Yeah, I I I, I know, but I wanna I uh, um thank you. Um, you you um, my wife's a math teacher too, and I didn't want to ask her, but. But I thought I thought it was good because it gets you right away in programming. Um, it's it's not about it's it's if it, you know it's like you don't have to come up with the correct formula. You don't have to come up with the exact formula. You just have to take the correct formula and and trans translate transfer translate that into a program and some big equation that's got a bunch of things on top of each other. That just translates into more steps, and it's that translation process. And so, so, um, uh, so I just did an area of a triangle, and uh, oh, here too, yeah, height base divided by two. Okay, very good. And so, yeah, so then it would be. Um, Multiply x by one half. So it'd be that one. And it's correct. Which instruction completes the
Um, uh, somebody asked about uh, well, when is when is homework due? Um, you know, in this class, these these due dates are are suggestions. It, so it should you, you should get it done by the end of the week. You should get all these done by the end of the week. Okay, and and uh, and and I'm going to be transferring the scores over to La Lima. Okay, but that doesn't mean that you still can't do them. Still do them. Still do them, and you're not going to get any points taken off. It's it's just that your scores will be delayed in copying it over. But but in the end, at the very end, I mean, it's like. Okay, if it's uh, the eleventh week and you haven't done anything, or no, 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 there's a day. There's a day when it's the last day you can withdraw or something. So before that day, I'm gonna go in, and if any of you have not done anything, well, I hope I notice before that day. But but then I'll then I'll inquire, and and uh, you know I'll encourage you, and uh, there there could be some some issue, but um, but. You know, you could have a, a very good reason, uh, and the, the, you know, there's, there's, it's easy to come up with a, I mean, to think of what it would be a good reason, where, where somebody hasn't really done anything, or maybe hasn't done any of the, the Xilab, uh, or, 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 or maybe you've done the Xilabs, but you haven't gone through. There's, there might be some, some of you, uh, might be. Are, you might already know how to program in, in Python, or you might already know how to program, and you might uh, uh, decide to, you know, that you can skip the participation activities because they kind of take a long time and they're kind of. Um, uh, uh, you may be um, uh, skilled enough at this point just to go right to the Xilabs, okay, uh, and. Because you could probably, because you might be able to just bang those out real, real quick, and so so some people might do that. Um, and if you do, um, then you know I'll 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 talk to you about it, and and perhaps we can make some other kind of arrangement for your grade or something. That's that in fact is what I'm doing with my other class. I'm they uh, none of the I'm recommending all of the participation activities and challenge activities, but. But, uh, but they aren't getting any points for them. Um, they're only getting points for, for doing these. So, um, but um, it's easy to be it's easy to become a sloppy programmer if you don't sort of go through any of the theory type stuff and learn the best practices of, of programming. Um, so. That's why we do that, and presumably in that in that other class, that 388 class, uh, this will be their second programming language. They will have learned some other language uh, previously. All right. So uh, anyway, let's get back to this. So uh, it's uh, 3:45. This class this goes till 4:30. I might not always go till 4:30, uh, but okay. So uh, which instruction completes the program to compute the average of three numbers? Uh, X plus Y plus Z divided by three. Yeah, I guess it's this one. Correct. Okay, uh, this is kind of cool. This is um, thinking about computational thinking, uh, algorithms. It's like um, let's just run this thing, and it's how you draw a triangle. Okay, pen down, forward one hundred, left. 120 forward one left 120 so so it's 120 degrees and so what what uh, uh, you're asked to do here is to is to write a program this is the program here to make the triangle and that's to write the program to make a square so uh, you can leave the forward in there let's get to let's do a forward let's do a left 90 Left, oh yes, left, left 90. Forward 100, left 90.
anyway, so this is different. So this turns into, this will be a square, I just have to finish it. Anyway, uh, so that's, that's uh, 1.1, and um, let's, let's, um, I want to uh, show you all these different kinds of things. So we've, we've done these three. Uh, let's see what, let's see a challenge activity. Click on this. And I guess we get that in section 1.3. Um, so let's go to section 1.3. Basic text output. Okay, so here we're learning about the print function. And so here's the print function. Um, each statement starts a new line. So this thing prints out, this is the print statement, prints out uh, the uh, hello there. So it's going to print out, looks like this. Uh, and then, um, and, uh, and then when it's done, it skips to the next line. Okay. So that's why this next print statement will print on the next line. And it skips to the next line, line, and then this print statement prints on the next um, line like that. So, so, uh, and if you don't want it to print on the next line, you want it to stay on the same line. You do something. You do it this end thing. You, you, you put this little thing at the end. But, but uh, that looks like that might go here. You do this. So here, hello there, and then you put this end equals a space. Rather, the default is, is end is a return, but you do that, and it's going to make end, end be a space. So then this, uh, so then this is going to print out like this. So here you just go through uh, select a statement that prints out the following welcome. Uh, okay, so it's got to have quotes. Okay, this is the tricky tricky one. See, no quotes, oops, single quote, double quote, uh-uh-uh, single quote, single quote, that's the one, see. All right, print, type a statement that prints this, hello, all right, print, hello, oh, capital, I think you like that. Hello. And it can be single quotes or double quotes, but they got to match. Check. Yes. Output simple text. Print that. Okay. Uh, print. Print. I'm going to do this. And I'm going to go like this. Copy. Paste. Okay. Yes. All right. Very cool. Print this. Okay, you want to do that? One, two, three, four, five. So, you know, if you guys do this along with me, then, then you're getting it done. Print one, two, three, four, five. Copy, paste, 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 paste. paste. Yeah, all right. All right, uh, what's next? Keeping output on the same line. Okay, yeah, so you put that end thing there. And now that, that will not put the, that'll not put the character turn at the end of the line. So, which pair of statements print output on the same line? No. Yes. No, look at that. No quotes. That trick is getting a little old. Click on this one and we get yes. Out, 
putting a variable value. Okay, so here we have a variable and it's called wage. It's called it's 20. And so this is going to print wages and then not print a return. Then it's going to print the wage and it's going to print goodbye after uh, the next line. So wage is 20. Wage is space and then 20. All right, so given the variable num cars equals nine, which statement prints nine? This one. Because this prints the variable, the value of this variable. This would just print the word num, car, num underscore cars. It would just print that word. Okay, so if you print, print num underscore people. Well, I think, I'm going to try not printing, putting, I'm going to try not putting the parentheses and see what happens. How about this? I'm going to put a bunch of spaces here. So we've got this. Yes, I like the spaces. All right. Um, you can install Python on your computer. And um, uh, let's see. Let me do um, Python. Okay, now I can do um, num people equals five. Okay. Now I'm going to say print parentheses num people. This is the correct answer. Okay, now I'm going to say print space, 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 num people, space, 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 and it works. Okay, so I just wanted to check to see if if we're, if this textbook is trying to force you into some sort of style, you know, if it's just not cool to have spaces like that, even though Python really doesn't care. But let's just do what the textbook wants. All right. Now it's perfect. Okay, outputting multiple items with one statement. Ah, so, so we can put commas. We can separate things with commas. And then it just puts a space in between. And this is how you put new line characters. Let's say you want to print something all in one line, but you want to put, you want to put returns. So you do this backslash n, and that'll put in a new line. And so this prints one, two, three like that. So this is just going to print an empty, it's going to print a return. Who below allows for experimenting with print statements? Population of country name, the population of comma country name, comma quote, was quote comma country population. Okay. The population of country name was, and then you can set, okay, so is this what I'm supposed to do? All right, well, I guess. Okay. Uh, assume age is 22, pet is dog, and name, pet name is Gerald. What is the output of you are? 
it's going to be U R 22 years old, period. Got a space there. Yes, okay. This one is um, Gerald, the dog, is 22. Yes. All right. Uh, oh, this is a challenge activity. Okay, so this is a little bit different. Okay, it's the same idea, though. Uh, Okay, so I'm supposed to, okay, so the first start, okay, what's the first one? Type the program's output, okay. Bob is nice. Check. Oh, what? Oh. Try it again. Bob is nice. Enter. That's what it's supposed to be. Check. Okay. Right. Good. Next. Okay. Bob is great. Okay. All right. Good. What's next? Sam is what's it do? Enter. Yes. Next. Ron is space twenty one space years. Enter. Oh. Ah. Bob is 22 year sick. Okay, done. Very good. Got all four checks. That's fantastic. Here's an input. Fix that, then it reads reads uh, that from the input from the input Marty McFly. All right, uh, which statement reads a uh, user entered string into a variable named num cards? This one. Complete a statement that reads a user of my Yeah, okay. Converting types. Okay, so um uh um so computers distinguish between strings of characters, you know, in, inside its memory and actual values. And so, you know, uh, you know, one, two, th the string of characters, one, two, three, is actually the character one, followed by the character two, and followed by the character three. And so you can't, you know, so it's not something that you, a string of characters, you don't add, um, you know, you you sort of attach onto the end. You concatenate. You don't really add. You, you you add if you consider taking one string and sticking another string onto it. You consider that adding. But that's strings. And then of course numbers you add like you know add like you subtract and multiply and so on. And so um, and and uh, Python is what's called a strongly typed language, which means it pays attention to that kind of thing. Uh, 
Uh, there's other languages that sort of interpret what you mean, and it'll either treat one, two, three as a string of, of three characters, or it'll treat one, two, three as a number. But Python, you have to be explicit, and that's that's generally better because it's less error prone. And so if you have a string one, two, three, and you want to actually <coughs> add four, five, six to it, then you have to first convert that into an integer, that string. That string one, two, three, you have to convert that into an integer. So then now it's a number. Now you can do operations on it like you can operate on numbers, like multiply, divide, and all that. Uh, okay, so there's that. You can still print. It, 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 it knows, though, that you can... I mean, when you say this, it, it knows that really you mean the string. Okay. All right, so um, now, but whenever you input, you're inputting characters. So if you input some number, you have to do this conversion thing. All right, type of statement that converts a string 15 into an integer and assigns my bar. So my bar equals int 15, quote, quote. Complete the code so that the new var is equal to the entered number plus five. Um, So here's an example. Um, you're you're inputting you um, the input statement. When it looks like this, when you put something in quotes like this, it's going to display that out, and then sit there and wait for you to to type something in. And that's going to come in here, and so this is going to be the twelve, and then you turn that. It's 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 a one. It's the character one followed by the character two. And then you, you make you make an integer version of it so you can do um, multiplication and division and so on. And so then here here we take the hourly hourly wage and we multiply it by the number of hours and multiply it by the, the number of weeks and and we get some number some calculated number and then you're able to display it out this way. So you display out the salary is and then this number. That's this calculation. So somebody makes twelve dollars an hour in a, after one year, assuming forty hours per week, assuming fifty weeks in a year, that would be forty thousand dollars a year. All right, so um, the tool below requires input to be pre-entered. Okay, so this is the this is that tool you saw before, I guess. Did we see this before? Oh, here's where you pre enter. Okay, enter the age of the dog in years, and it enters that, and then enters that, and then three dog years is about 121 human years. So you enter the age of the dog in years and turn that into an integer, and so now it's going to be dog years. And then we want to convert dog years to human years, and I guess you multiply it by seven. <clears throat> for a cat, cat it might be six or five. Yeah. Yes. All right, um, and then you get this human year. So dog years, dog, some number, five, five. Let's see. So the dog that's 13. I've heard of dogs living to be 13 before. Okay, 91. That's a pretty old dog. All right, and so is about, and then this does not put the return, just put the space, is about space 91, which is the computed human years. All right, so um, got those points. Now, 
read three integers from user input without a prompt, then print the product of those three integers. So, so if the input is, is two, return, three, return, five, return, it's misleading. When I first, when I was first going through this, this textbook, I just popped to this random page and I thought, whoa, I've got to figure out how to split these, split this string of two space, three space five. I have to figure out how to split that into a two and then a three and then a five. So I was looking around up here and I thought, well, she's only in chapter one. And then I realized that, that that's, not, that's not really what it, what it means. It means, first it asks for, anyway, so the answer is, Well, you can put all this on one line, okay? I'm gonna be fancy here. Print. Uh, int. Input. Times int. Input. Times int. Input. End. Try it. Thirty. Yep, it worked. Okay, so so that's a fancy way of doing it. Uh, and that's I like clean clean way of doing it. But but a less but a different way would be I equals that. J equals that. K, K equals that. Uh, L, L looks too much like a one. M equals I times J. J times K, and then print M. Oh. See, that's another way of doing it. So, um, this idea with programming is that, um, the first way I did it is how you might do it if you were really experienced. You can think of all this stuff in your head because we've done it a zillion times before, and you just you just type out that statement. Uh, but but um, normally you aren't writing programs that do do such simple things. Normally normally you're writing programs that are challenging and they're big and they're challenging, and so you have to get good at breaking it down into a more simpler, smaller steps, and and breaking this, um, you know, int input times breaking this down and breaking this down into this is a way of taking what this looks like it's you know kind of complex. And uh, it's it's actually you know this simple. It, you know, it's actually very simple. Let's just do it. Yeah, I should, you should, shouldn't have that there. Anyway, um, all right. So um, so so either one of these. Work. All right. So that's uh, the next challenge activity is. Um, Read two numbers and then print the sum of these numbers. So you're going to put something there and you're going to put something there. That's pretty easy. Print that out. That's that's a baby problem. It's a baby problem. Okay. 
what's next? Errors, let's see, it's 412. This class goes to 430. Okay, this is learning about errors. And uh, there's syntax errors and there's semantic errors or logic errors. Um, so uh, if you do something like Uh, you can't just, you cannot have a statement following a statement like that. It has to be on, on a new line. So this is where it, it, it prints out and this is what the error message would look like. All right, so um, syntax errors. Find the syntax errors. Assume this exists. Uh, I don't know. There shouldn't be a period there. Yeah, no period. Uh, there should be a comma there. Missing comma. Looks good to me. Ooh. Oh, ho, ho. I got fooled again. Look at that, single quote, double quote. Print wolf, that's an error. No quotes. Hello, I don't see anything wrong with that. I don't see what's wrong with that. It's going to print out hello, followed by a plus sign, followed by a friend sign. Yeah, it's going to treat it as a phrase. Huh? It's going to treat it as a phrase. So it's going to be like hello plus friend as a phrase. Yes. Like, plus just a punctuation in it, not uh, an equation or something. So. Yes. Yes. yes, I know, but, but, I don't think, but I don't think it'll be flagged as an error is what I'm thinking. Yeah, so it should be no error. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. So I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to go over to my. Um, didn't I have a. a little... Yeah, see? Yeah, you're right. See? It, it just puts that stupid plus sign there. But... Okay, well. Um... Okay, so um, very good. Wait a minute. What happened? Earlier error was clicked. What? Earlier um, you clicked error, error, so that's why it was incorrect, and now you click no error, so it corrected. Oh, so, oh, so I did get so so I did get that wrong, or so 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 I was wrong. I was wrong before, right? Yeah, it wasn't easy to see, so. <laughs> All right, I don't normally do this. I'm just trying to kill time, I guess. Okay, so anyway, you know what I meant. Um, all right, uh, find, click, find and click on the three syntax errors. There's three, okay, this is a syntax error. Yeah. Oh, 
Um, okay. Oh, this is syntax error. It doesn't have a closing paren. Oh. Never mind. It's not a syntax error. How do I undo that one? Um, all right. What is this? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that's no, that's that's good. Sorry. Well, I don't know about this. No, no. I, okay, that's there's not not a syntax there. So, did I get all of them? I clicked on three syntax errors. This is one. Oh, yes. That's one. Up there like that. And this one. Right. Okay, that's three. Good coding practice. One code three code. Okay, um, yeah, all this is saying is that when you're writing code, you should run your code often. You should, you should start small and run it, make sure you got all the errors out, and then just you know, add, add a little bit, add some statements, then run it. And then, then that way, as you're going along, if something doesn't work, you know that it's just something that you just added. Okay? And so that really narrows it down. And so that's why in this class, um, you know, these tools, the, this book, this textbook is, is it, it's, it doesn't care how many times you try something. Um, in fact, um, you know, um, early in the morning when I'm writing code, I can write lots of lines of code without having to, to try, try stuff out, uh, you know, because my mind is sharp. Uh, but late in the day, when I'm trying to fix something, if I if I something that's on my something I had to do that day, and it's late in the day and I'm tired, I will take really little baby steps because that way, if something doesn't work, I know I just have to look back a couple times and a couple statements and see what the the problem is. So so that's the point there. Now, <clears throat> runtime errors are errors that happen that you can't um, that it's 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 not a problem with the program itself. It's it's more a problem of how, how it was used. So some error occurs at runtime. So in this case, for instance, um, you are it, it it computes some salary value, and then it asks you to enter an integer. And in this case, somebody did not enter an integer. They entered in the uh, the word Henry. And so then it took Henry, and it tried to convert Henry into an integer, and that caused the error. You cannot convert Henry into an integer. So that caused a runtime error. You know, this, this program assumes that you're going to enter in an actual number, something that a string of characters that can be converted into a number. In this case. So, so that's what runtime errors are. And, uh, so there's syntax errors, uh, indentation errors in Python. Indentation is important. In other languages, it's not important at all. But in Python, it's very important. Uh, yeah, so here, an invalid, invalid value error when you're, when you're giving letter, you know, letters to a, in, an integer function. Um, name error, uh, you're referring to a variable that doesn't exist. In, in other languages, if 
you refer to a variable that doesn't exist, it just assumes that you're declaring a new variable. And if it's a string variable, it's going to be blank. And if it's an integer or a number, it's going to be zero. Um, well, you can see how that causes problems. Because if you really meant it to mean some variable and you misspelled it, then it's not going to flag it as an error. It's going to take it as a new variable with a value zero. And so in Python, it doesn't let you use a variable until you've declared a variable. So the first time it ever sees a variable, it's got to be on the left-hand side of an equal sign. So you need to be assigning the value. First you assign it a value, and then you can use it as a variable. <clears throat> so these are, uh, here you can go through and you click the, uh, I wanted to, before it's, it's 422, I want to, I want to um, find a, um, do one of these, um, one of these here. Okay, so let's start with the first lab. Okay, so this is the first lab. Um, here is, we're just learning how this thing works. So let's just click, so there's this develop mode. There's develop mode and there's submit mode. So here we're in develop mode. And let's just click on develop mode. And let's click run on the program. And we're supposed to, um, OK, there's a bug here because, oh. I oh, low default. Okay, because I, I did this earlier, so you already got my three points. I need low default. Okay, it starts out like this. And uh, develop mode, and when you run it, what's displayed out is this. And this is the wrong answer. Okay, and by the way, it's sort of recording this stuff, and this is sort of a signature of my work. And I think they have some fancy way of figuring out if you're cheating or something. I don't know, but I'll see how you can cheat with this kind of stuff. Okay, it, you, you, you can be cheat by having somebody sitting behind you telling you what to type in, which is, which, by the way, is not a bad way to learn. Uh, if you get something to do that, that that, uh, that actually is a pretty good way to, to learn how to code when you're starting out. Anyway, so we're supposed to fix this. So so to fix it, it's supposed to be the number squared. So you put in a multiple, make this a multiply, and that'll work. And then um, fix it as instructed. Um, you, you want it to, you actually want it to, skip to the next line. Change, use that rather than that. And uh, OK, so anyway, so now when we run it, when you enter in 3, you get 9, which is the right answer. Now, what happens if we just click on Submit Mode and Submit for Grading? What happens? I think I'm not going to get all the points because I'm supposed to have an enter. I'm supposed to it was supposed to skip to the next line. In other words, I was supposed to take this out. I was supposed to take that out. So let me go back to develop mode. Let me take this out. Uh, and then run it. Doesn't look any different to me, but if we go to submit mode and we submit the grading, I got all the points. Total score three out of three. All right. Um, all right, let's go to, um, I'm going to go to, I've got five minutes left. I'm going to go to the, uh, let's go to this one, welcome message. Oh, I want that image. Okay. Write a program that takes the first name as input and outputs a welcome message to that name. If the input is Pat, the output is, hello, Pat, welcome to CS Online. Um, so. Okay. All 
all right, well, that should be it. It doesn't say anything about whether it should skip to the next line or anything. Uh, so I'm going to submit it, submit the grading. And I got all the points. Very good. Uh, Mad Lib. Mad Lib act activities. Um, so you, you input some words. And it prints out, Eric went to this place to buy this different types of this. All right, this is the answer. Hmm. Well, anyway, um, yeah, I did this earlier, so it's showing the answer. It's too bad. Oh, well. Okay, so um, it's 428, and are there any questions? Okay, so I will um, I will see you again on Thursday at this time, and uh, uh, please email me if you have any questions or issues. Uh, if there's something you'd like to see, expectations, or um, anything else that you might need, and we'll just uh, sort of continue on. And uh, if there's any issues, we can cover them. Uh, but I'll uh, continue to do these assignments. Um, if you look ahead. Uh, probably not so much now, but later on, if you, you can look ahead and if there's one you, you're sure that you looks difficult, then then let me know, and I uh, and I will do that. You know, in in class, I'll do that one no problem in class. All right. Are there any other questions? Okay, uh, I'll put this video up uh, in about an hour. Thanks for watching. All right, I have a hey, professor, question. Thank you. What? What's that? Someone have a question? Yeah, yeah. Um, yep. You said that the best way to contact you if there is any trouble is to text you, correct? Yes, that we're, that's a really good way because I always have my thing with me. Better text okay. me. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. See you. Thank you.